I need to save. Hey, Blender Bob here. The clip you're about to see was supposed to be part of the part three of my modeling for the VFX industry series, and uh, it was running long, so I decided to take it out. But you know, I made it, so might as well show it to you. Also, in this clip, I didn't do the subtitles because it takes a very long time to do, and I'm not sure if it's useful. I mean, I made it in the first three clips because I thought maybe I speak too fast or people have a hard time understanding my French-Canadian accent. Well, I say French-Canadian because if I was French from France, I would talk with an accent like that. Uh, so uh, we are going to take the bevel and uh, we are going to change the radius of the bevel. I'm just kidding. Okay, so tell me in the comments if you want the subtitles back or not, if it's useful to you. Actually, you can leave me a comment on anything for suggestions or whatever. I read them all and I reply to everybody. I can still afford to do it. I don't know how long it's going to last like this, but now is the good time. All right, enjoy. We're going to do the base of this laptop using only one Boolean. Everything else will be bevels, bevels, bevels. And inset and extrude. So we scale that cube the way we want it. And then, of course, we apply the transformation before we do any bevels. We're going to split the cube into three sections, one for the notch, one for the trackpad, and one for the keyboard. For the notch, we're going to use a cylinder, we're going to scale it and move it at the right place. We're going to snap it on the edge. We want to make sure it's perfectly aligned, so snap to edge, center, just like that. Then we can rotate it in the right angle, 45 degrees, just like that. Remove the caps. Now for the next step, make sure you are in wireframe mode to select all the polygons, not just the one in front. So we're going to take half the cylinder, we're going to do extract and move this part away. After this, we're going to center the pivot on the geometry and place it back in the center where it's supposed to be. Adjust the size as needed. In local mode, we're going to scale the cylinder to make sure it's wide enough for the boolean. And then we're just going to press F to fill the caps. And for you Boolean lovers, I will allow you to do one. So select this cylinder, then select the base. If you have Bool Tool installed, it's a free add-on that comes with Blender. Just press Ctrl and minus on the keypad and voila. Delete the Boolean modifier and the cylinder, we don't need them anymore. Corners, 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 select all of them and do a bevel. Six divisions will be enough for the purpose of this demo. Now you're dying to do it. Okay, come on, let's do it, bevel modifier. So we're gonna make sure we are on angles. We are gonna make it on two segments and we're gonna adjust the size of the bevel to make it very small because Apple bevels are really, really small. Okay, trackpad, inset the face, scale it and extrude. We're gonna do something different here. We're gonna select the edge ring and we're gonna bevel the interior instead of using the bevel to round the outside. Now we round the inside. For the trackpad, we're gonna take the bottom face. We're gonna inset it a little bit and extrude it up. And that's it. The bevel modifier will take care of the rest. For the keyboard, we also need to work with a rectangular surface. So we're gonna use the knife tool to cut the top part. Just like that. Here we go. Just like we did with the trackpad, we're gonna inset, extrude, and inset again, but this time twice. And again, we're gonna bevel the interior corners. Again, with the bevel tool, we're gonna bevel the corner just to make it smoother. It's way too sharp, so I will take this edge loop here and scale it a little bit to adjust the roundness. Press shift if it goes too fast, so you can do like micro adjustments. Same thing with this edge loop here. Okay, let's see what it looks like without the wireframe. Shade smooth and turned on the auto smooth. Now here's something funny. The corner here is too soft, so we're gonna add a bevel to make it a little bit sharper. Interesting technique, huh? Okay, let's move on to the keyboard. So you see this big polygon here? We're just gonna separate it from the rest of the geometry. And using a bunch of edge loops, we're gonna cut it into little rectangles and these are gonna be our keys. Yeah, it's gonna be stylized. It's just a demo after all. Let's turn this off for now so we can work just on this part. Actually, we only need the first polygon. The other ones, we can get rid of them. I will skip very fast here because it's the exact same thing we did for the trackpad. Inset, extrude, round the corners, and then we're gonna add a bevel modifier. 
And for the keys, just like the trackpad, we take the bottom polygon and we extrude it. We're going to use two area modifiers to fill up the area with more keys. So one is going to be in the vertical axis and the other one is going to be in the other axis. <laughs> Okay, at this point we need to apply all the modifiers. To offset the keys, select the top polygons of these rows. Grow the selection using shift period until you get the entire row. Separate the rows and offset them as needed. For the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to take these edges and align them with the edges of the other keys. Make sure you turn on snap to vertice. Here we go. I could also scale down these keys, but you know, I just feel lazy. I'm just going to delete them and do like I did on the other side. Now we can combine the keys together. If you want to separate the keys because you want to put another texture on it or because you want to animate them, you just need to select one face, then you go select coplanar and this way all of them will be selected. You grow the selection a little bit and you separate. Let's combine the base of the keyboard with the body and we are done. Now you may ask, is it a problem if these vertices are not merged together? If the geometry is not going to get sculpted or distorted, then there's no problem at all because it's a flat surface. So we're not breaking any tangents here and it's going to work just fine. Is it the cleanest possible geometry? Absolutely not. Like here in this corner, I could actually connect the two bevels together because they both have six edges. But what I wanted to show you here is that you can use bevels not only to round corners, but to actually create geometry and that you don't need to use booleans every time you want to punch a hole in something. But hey, we modeled the base of a laptop in six minutes, 30 seconds with some clever editing and uh, speed up, but hey, we modeled the base of a laptop in six minutes, 30 seconds. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Now let's move on to part four, sculpting on hard surfaces.